My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Challenge the Spire here in Slay the Spire Modded. We are going to be continuing with our quest to get the Platinum Elite Rush with Ironclad done. Time for a challenge indeed. Let's see what the spell shop holds for us. Okay, well there's a couple things here that are already kind of appealing. First is Divine Protection. Gain 8 temporary HP at the start of each combat. That is huge in the amount of HP it can save you over in the long run. But there's also Corruption, Necrogeddon, as well as Defy Death, and a couple of other things that work in an Exos build. So I could take Corruption, Necrogeddon, Defy Death, and Double Warcry, and then try and use Necrogeddon as my... Uh, my lethal, I guess? And then just fill my deck with skills. Actually, you know what? That sounds really good. Okay, so if I take the Frozen Egg first, I can get a pre-upgraded copy of Corruption. But it's 3681, 3681 is 87, 117. 117 plus 90 is 207, minus 1, 206, 420. Okay, never mind, I can do it. Sorry, I just had to make sure that I could afford all of those if I was going to do that. Alright, next thing that we probably want to upgrade is going to be Necrogeddon, so that it affects all the enemies. Alright. This is all going to go absolutely excellently. Play all of these defends for free. Great. Alright, so it is going to be pretty harmful in this fight, but it's going to get better every single fight as I pick up more skills. Uh, self form clay as well as Vajra. Whenever you lose HP, block for three next turn, as well as Vajra. Start each combat with one strength. Uh, no, we're not going to want to take any of those. Very low impact for what we're trying to do. Thankfully here we're in a unique position where Necrogeddon showing up is going to be incredible because of all of these days it's put into our deck. We already know Necrogeddon is going to be ridiculous. Okay. Feel No Pain would be a great pickup for this deck as well by the way. Something I'm noticing. Rough. Come on, Necrogeddon. Really? Had to be absolutely in the last available hand. Yikes. Karen's Ashes, whenever you exhaust a card, deal 3 damage to all enemies as well as Grinning Jar, obtain a skill that draws 2 cards, obtain an additional copy for every other 12 cards added to this deck. Alright, those, oh, those were all attacks, lame. Uh, Karen's Ashes is a really, really, really handy pickup for us here. An incredibly important one for us as well, helps front load a little bit of the damage in this deck. That'll get it done. Question card. Future card awards have one additional card to choose from. Future card awards mine. So this one is not affected. And Shuriken, every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain one strength. Really? I can't take life mind. Just so much loss. Hey, grab bag work. Sweet. Um, inability to upgrade cards at rest sites. I think I have to be okay with that. Because I think I need to rest at my next rest site. Uh, add a colorless card to your hand, sure. And we'll take armaments, I guess. I'd really like if I could upgrade armaments now, but I can't. Time to rest. Just trying to get some more skills into the deck. Get some more things to exhaust. 
Because it can feel like we're light on exhausts. If we still get to reasonably defend ourselves, not perfectly, even reasonably defend ourselves, then we can be okay. Feel No Pain would be a great pickup for this deck, but unfortunately, we've seen no such thing. Iron Hammer during the first turn, drawing a card upgrades it, as well as Mummified Hand. Whenever you play a power card, a random card in your hand costs zero for the rest of the turn. We'll also take a shrug it off. It's possible that just saved us. It's possible that's not enough. Okay, thinking ahead. No, I don't want to redraw any of these. Okay, I found some defenses. Beautiful. Got myself a strength and a defense there as well. Alright, do I armaments the bash? Yeah, I think I have to armaments the bash. As much as I would desperately like to affect anything else with that. Grinning jaw. Come on, Necrogeddon. <laughs> Alright, that's lethal still, but it's getting worse and worse. Bottle Tornado upon pickup, choose a power card, start each combat that in your opening hand. Sure, as well as the Regal Pillow. Whenever you rest, heal an additional 15 HP. Also take the second wind there so that I can start burning out status and negative curses like that. Well, by exhausting all of those, I can actually kill all of the summons this turn, so that seems valuable. Okay, that's good. The dazed in our deck is actually going to be a little bit of extra damage for us as well. Hmm. No, we should be fine to just target the backline here, wait for the next turn and kill. We may have brought this back around from the brink. I'm going to be very excited if that happens to be the case. Stone Calendar, at the end of turn 7, deal 52 damage to all enemies as well as a pair. Upon pickup, raise your max HP by 10. And again, nothing more that we want to pick up there. Oh, that's odd. Drawing two additional cards per turn is really, 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 really good. But if the Necrogeddon's not zero cost, and if the Grinning Jars aren't zero... Well, actually, Corruption is always in our opening hand, right? So all of our skills are always zero cost, right? Just ignore the costs of any of our skills. So it's just Necrogeddon and the Strikes, basically. Necrogeddon, the Strikes, and the Bash. So this is actually just draw two additional per turn. It might negatively affect Necrogeddon, but it will get me through my deck and to Necrogeddon much more quickly. I think I actually have to take it. Barricade would be hilarious, but I think it has to be impervious here. All right. Rest again. Almost back on full HP. We've got a second lease on life here. This could go well. I would love to pop that impervious there, but I'm not that bold. I suspect I will need it later. Ow. Had to be expected, unfortunately. Metamorphosis and Brewmaster. Yeah. That's okay. Not hit by another 45 this turn, and to fight death. I really, really wish I still had a copy of. Uh, what's it called again? 
I knew its name. I still wish I had a copy of Second Wind in the neck because all of these burns are actually starting to be real cumbersome. I was certain that was lethal. That's a lot of damage that I did not have to take there. And more happens this turn. If I just used the steroid potion, I would have had that already. Tiger Marble. At the start of each combat, add a random card which exhausts your hand. It goes zero until played. And another sword. The first card containing strike you play each round is played twice. It takes an additional turn to recharge for each energy spent on that card. We'll take a shockwave here because it's just a bunch of effects for a very small amount of price. Uh, life is pretty bad for us right now, though. I, I saw to that. I'll say that much. Yikes. Well. Guess all we can really do at this point is hope. I'm going to hit an armaments on a war cry trying to find the shockwave, which we do. Beautiful. Lost the shockwave and the jack of all trades. Getting us impatience. That, I guess, yeah, that could work. And that's literally just enough exhaust cards to get through that fight. Good lord. Uh, incense burner. Every six turns, gain one intangible as well as an adrenaline potion. Gain two HP and one card. Uh, and bottled flurry, by the way. You pick up a choose. Uh, you pick up the bottle flurry. You choose a card. You retain that card at the end of your turn. If it would exhaust due to being ethereal, it is discarded instead. Not if it would exhaust, it is discarded instead. Only if it would have exhausted due to being ethereal. We'll put Necrogeddon there so that I can make sure that I cast Necrogeddon on the right turns. And Battle Trance for the extra draw, I think. Now this is a turn. Oh, what beauty. Now I just need to get to the Necrogeddon as soon as possible. By death, no, still absolutely none of these. Where's the Necrogeddon I mode? It always feels like I should be getting Necrogeddon a lot more quickly than I'm actually finding it. It's also, like, Necrogeddon seems not to be as impactful here as I would have liked. Upon pick up, you choose a card against Sneko. If you do not choose a card, you may choose one at a later rest site as a free action. And Wax Seals, Relics and Shops cost 20% less. Uh, borrow 100 gold and add a curse to your deck until you pay it back if you activate it at a shop. I mean, I can put Bottled Sneko on, like, anything. It really doesn't matter, because I get its cost randomized when I draw it anyway. So, I, I choose Bash, sure. Take Sentinel as well, neat. Let's also use Adrenaline Potion. We're going to need more effect out of it this turn. Great. Alright, so I should be able to cast all of these cards now. Let's use the Strength Potion. I think I can just straight up murder the Spire Spear. Mm-hmm. And then turn around and start making short work of the Spire Shields. Yep. This'll, this'll get the job done. Woo! And to think, I was actually stressing about this. Why did I second win there? I in. I in. Ah. Oh. Good lord. Well, I'm very glad that I didn't sink myself with all of the 
all of the the single mistake that I made that ended up with us taking about 50 extra damage in the Nemesis fight. That single miscalculation and lack of using a steroid potion could have cost us that run. But instead, we succeed with Wild Aplomb. Hell yes! So that is our platinum win for the Ironclad in Challenge the Spire. We still have the boss rush modes to go, but for the sake of kind of partitioning these episodes sensibly so that they make sense when watched as a series, we'll have to start that in the next episode. For the moment, my name's been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Challenge the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.